Hey guys, so in order to make part three on this three phase series, I had to pick up a smaller three phase motor. Uh, this is a half horsepower. It's another Dayton, so it's a pretty good quality motor. It's actually the cheapest three phase motor you can find brand new on eBay. With the tax and shipping is right at 50 bucks for it, so it's not too bad, really. And I made up this little forward off reverse box, the three position switch. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Uh, right now it's in the middle, so it's off. And uh, this is the five horsepower Dayton three phase motor that you've seen in the last uh, couple videos. So now I'm going to explain what we're going to do in this video, then we'll look at the wiring, and then we'll do the demonstration. But uh, if you get a piece of three phase equipment and you don't have no way to run it, but you may have another three phase motor laying around. Like suppose this was on a drill press or something. You wanted to run it without changing the motor, but you had this. So this is a simple way to get three phase power out of single phase. It's not the most efficient way and not the uh, easiest way, but it works. This is called a rotary phase converter. And the way we're going to be doing it is going to be a very, very simple rotary phase converter. What we're going to be doing, wrapping the rope around the shaft here, getting this motor spinning, then I'm going to throw my knife switch, and it'll take off running on single phase power. Then, this motor will actually start generating the third phase on its own after it gets going. So then, we get the three phase power coming off of here, to my uh, on off, to my forward re off reverse switch box, to control this motor. So once this one comes up to speed, it's generating the third phase, so now you have three phases coming over to here and this motor will take off on its own and you get true three phase power coming off of it. Now since this is a five horsepower motor you're probably only going to be able to get be able to run a three maybe a four horsepower off of it you're not going to be able to run another five horsepower off of it. Another five horsepower may start but it ain't going to be able to have a full five horsepower load on it. But on a fancier rotary phase converter or more advanced one or actually a, a bolt rotary phase converter you're going to have like a small single phase starting motor here just to start it instead of wrapping rope around it it's all going to be done automatically this is a manual phase converter so now let's take a look at all the wiring and give you an idea of what's going on here alright so starting my disconnect box the orange wire coming into the top the number 10 gauge going to a 30 amp two pole 240 volt breaker then we got single phase 220 coming out here notice this white wire here I painted it red down here just to make it look like a hot wire you kind of see what's going on here the big the four big wires here coming out of this bigger cable is what's going straight into the five horsepower three phase and I got the smaller wire piggybacked on there on the four uh, screws as well. And you see the 220 is coming in on phase one and phase two. And this is open here because I only got single phase power here. But I'm just using this to tie these two wires together here. You see there's no connection to the grid here from that. So this is just a, a junction terminal strip here. And the small wire runs in and out in my forward off reverse box then straight into this three phase motor here now just to uh, I know somebody will be doubting it that these are three phase motors but there's a three phase and over here it's three phase there's that model number for this motor if you want to this is a good little it's actually a quarter horsepower it's that half horsepower it's a good little motor just to mess around with it can be wired up for 240 or 480. So right now, without doing anything, we'll turn this on. You can see I got the shafts marked so you can tell when they're spinning easier. Right now they're both just going to sit here and hum and if you left it on it's going to blow a fuse or burn ourselves up. You can't hear this one but it is making a real light hum. We're going to get the motor spinning clockwise facing the shaft. Pulling that forward rotation. Nice. 
Now this motor, now this motor's running. It's actually going to be generating this third phase. This motor will take off. And it's running forward. You better watch it. It's spinning this way. Now reverse. It's spinning that way. You better see. While it's probably not good for the motor, I'm going to flip it straight to reverse. You see it's, it's actually reversing. You can put a full load on this motor. This motor just going to be generating it, be serving as a generator more or less. This motor is spinning clockwise like this. The same direction as this. I got phase one, two, and three all lined up with both motors. L1, L2, L3. Being consistent on that. Red wire being phase one and white being two and black being three. Yeah, both of them hooked up identical. So the rotation will be the same. And it'll also take off like that on its own too. As long as this one's spinning, you got a light load, it's gonna go ahead and take, go ahead and power that light load. Now I'm gonna show you what's interesting to me. See this one's spinning forward, I'm gonna leave that on forward. This one's spinning clockwise facing the shaft the same direction as that. So now I'm gonna start this motor and counterclockwise. I'm gonna show you what it does. But it's still set on forward. It's spinning counterclockwise now. Now in reverse, it's spinning forward. So you got to pay attention to the direction of rotation of your motor. Once you establish one, two, and three, you got to you got to know which direction the motors are labeled as. Most motors are forward, clockwise facing the shaft. That's just the standard that I've ran into. You can shut it off under load and it's not going to hurt anything. This motor just coasting. Alright, so this is what this switch looks like. It's a three position toggle switch, on off on. You see here, you get these off eBay or Amazon. You got two of them for $11 I believe. It's a nine wire switch. It's a three pole double throw center off switch is all it is. So now you look in the middle, the three in the middle, I call it the output of the switch. That's where the red, white, and black going to the motor is hooked. And it gets your three phase coming in here. Then it's crossed on two of them. Okay, now to look exactly how this switch is wired. You see in the middle, I got red, white, black. That's the one going to the motor. And I got the power actually coming in on this side. The same red, white, black. The way when it switches into forward, and you got black to black, white to white, red to red. Then when you flip it in reverse, you got still got black to black, and you got red to white, and then white to red. So it's just switching two of the wires around. They can be any two on a three-phase motor to reverse the rotation. So that's how this switch is wired. It's pretty simple, but it looks more complicated than it actually is. I drilled a hole in a blank cover here to put that in there okay so we're going to talk briefly about the three phase rotation meters or testers this is a very cheap one i bought off uh, ebay or amazon i think amazon things like right at 15 dollars or 20 dollars something like that and this i call this a basic one because this just reads the power it don't actually test the motor itself so with this you really got to know the motor you can see you got L1, L2, and L3, or line 1, line 2, and line 3. So that's exactly what we got here. The yellow is tied into the red wire. The green is into the white. And the red's into the black. That's line 1, line 2, and line 3 on this. And that's, I'm consistent all the way through on everything. 
uh, you see both reds on both motors are I got this one wired up the same as well so reds line one whites line two and blacks line three so that's how I got this wired all the way through and even on the variable frequency drive so anyway I'm gonna get this motor running then we're gonna read out what's going on here with this it's got a caution thing it cannot be used as a voltage detector one phase can be alive even when all orange LEDs are off and open phase check so what that means is if even if you just got this hooked to one lead the other two are open you know there's still power here and this is not going to show you power on one phase it'll show you power on two phases or three phases you notice there's no ground wire here. If this was designed with a ground wire, you know, you'd be able to read one, two, or three phases like that. Because you'd be reading voltage to ground. This is just reading voltage, uh, phase to phase is what this is reading. The more advanced phase rotation meters will actually have batteries in it too. And you can hook it straight to a motor, unhook from power, just straight to the motor. You can actually spin the motor and it'll give you your one, two, and three. That way you can hook it up in any different way, but it'll still read out your one, two, to three to get your rotation right. This is what I thought this was when I ordered it. I ordered the wrong one. But uh, it's very simple and it's uh, very handy. Because once you establish your one, two, and three on your motor, you just mark your wires. If it's unlabeled, if your label's missing or something, then hook it to your three-phase power and get match your rotation in your one, two, three. Then you can just transfer everything over and hook it up and you'll have your rotation right. Very handy. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments on the uh, rotary phase converters or phase rotation meters, uh, I try to do my best to show everything that I could with what I have to work with. I know it's a very basic setup and very basic demonstration, but hopefully you can might be able to learn something from it or be entertained by it, nothing else. And... Uh, I've always had a strong interest in three phase. I just think it's very interesting how it works and everything. And uh, it's been really fun making these uh, videos on this. So if you get any questions or comments, I'll try my best to help you out. I don't know everything about three phase, but uh, I might be able to point you in the right direction. But, uh, but it's been very interesting making these videos and kind of refresh my memory a little bit too. Because it's been a while since I've done anything with three phase since I started making these videos. But like I say, if you got any questions or comments, I'll try my best to help you out. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next video.